Blake Cousins. Welcome back, everybody. We have a special guest. We have a Dr. Michael Sala. He's um, been speaking with Corey Good about the effort to figure out what's going on in the Antarctica. Apparently, there's an artifact from the flash frozen alien civilization created by refugees. And this is causing a destabilizing massive ice from continents that are uh, affecting our world today. Is there a secret military base in Antarctica? Is there uh, some kind of weapons development? Apparently, according to Corey Good, who Dr. Michael Sala just interviewed, over four hours of incredible information that uh, they spoke together about right here in Hawaii, they are saying that uh, this is a violation of the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, which stipulates that continent resources will only be used for scientific purposes. Well, maybe this sounds like there is no treaty break whatsoever. It sounds like there's a lot of science going on, but they're just not telling us about it. We have Michael Sala with us right now. How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm well, Blake. Um, yeah, it's very uh, fascinating developments in Antarctica, what Corey Good has been sharing, and uh, definitely there's big concerns that uh, you know, Antarctica is being destabilized as some ancient artifacts are being sought by different uh, countries. You know, there's a race. There is a race for uh, information, technology, and ancient artifacts, no doubt about it. Do you think uh, this is the new, the new wave of finding ancient alien artifacts right now because of this uh, kind of melting of the Antarctic? And it really sounds like it has nothing to do with climate change, but something coming in from within. Is this correct? Well, you know, this is one of the things that um, uh, Corey Good says that he's gotten uh, information from his uh, sources that uh, the volcanic activity uh, under the ice um, is heating up and there's a lot of uh, thermal activity and that that is generating uh, a lot of the ice to melt from under the ice shelf and that's kind of like lubricating the ice, ice shelf so that it's melting or, or that it's starting to move um, more more quickly. And uh, there's also a lot of use of um, uh, microwave technologies to be able to dig through the ice. Uh, it's essentially melting the ice um, in these uh, ongoing ex excavations that are happening all over Antarctica. We have all these uh, officials, high-ranking officials, visiting the Antarctica as of recent, and uh, apparently people are saying there's a reason behind this. Is there something imminent coming up, according to Corey Good? Uh, well, yes. Um, what he's saying is that uh, in 2002, uh, there were excavations uh, that were allowed to begin um, involving mainstream scientists, uh, archaeologists from around the world who were given access to these uh, artifacts, these alien uh, relics uh, that were discovered under the ice. And so they were given access in 2002 to that. And so they have been doing a lot of research. And now they're on the verge of having these scientists come out with uh, papers, uh, with documentary films to basically detail the excavations of a flash frozen civilization uh, that was discovered under the ice, uh, w which would basically revolutionize the, the understanding of the global climate and, and kind of like make it uh, very feasible that the uh, pole shifts um, do happen very quickly just as uh, Sir Charles Hapgood argued um, in the 1950s in, um, in a number of books. So according to the history of planet Earth, what Corey Good and other people are saying is that there was a pole shift, and there are pole shifts that happen frequently throughout the Earth's uh, existence is that the Antarctica was once in a warm region and not uh, in the South Pole. Oh, well, that's right, yes. Um, uh, and Antarctica was, uh, we know from the 
the maps from uh, Orontius Phineas and uh, Perry Reis, uh, which both show Antarctica, um, the Antarctic coastline uh, without ice, and especially the uh, Orontius Phineas map shows the entire Antarctic continent uh, before it was covered by ice. And so what that suggests is that um, in our recent history, um, you know, we go back uh, maybe 13,000 years when um, you know, there was some global catastrophe, uh, some kind of uh, event, a great flood event, that that was uh, related uh, to Antarctica suddenly disappearing. Uh, because before that time, uh, cartographers knew about Antarctica. Um, and so this is something that we know from the uh, from the maps of that uh, some some time Antarctica was navigable um, and it wasn't covered by ice. Interesting. You know, there is some rumor. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. I'm not sure if it's legit. But what I've been hearing on through certain sources, and some of them are coming in from sources that. Uh, really have no affiliation with each other. But over the past couple of days, people have been saying that Donald Trump has made uh, a visit to the Antarctica recently. And there's been correspondence via uh, Corey Good. Corey Good has been stating that Donald Trump wants to get disclosure out this year, but it might take longer. Have you heard anything about this? Oh, uh, well, with, that, with Donald Trump, I mean, there, there really is... Um, he, in his inauguration speech, um, he, he made a statement at the very end, which uh, kind of like was very suggestive in, in terms of uh, releasing or being involved in the release of some kind of technologies uh, that would have a, a dramatic change on, on, the, on the United States. And what he said uh, towards the end of his inauguration uh, was, quote, uh, we stand at the birth of a new millennium ready to unlock the mysteries of space, to free the earth from the miseries of disease and to harness the energies, industries and technologies of tomorrow, end quote. So that's what he said in his, in his inauguration speech. And, uh, and what Corey Good uh, was told uh, by a very senior Air Force official um, is that Trump, uh, shortly after the inauguration, um, issued a top-secret memorandum to the Department of Defense and to the intelligence community, uh, commanding them to lift the secrecy order on over a, a thousand patent applications that were basically uh, put on ice uh, because, uh, you know, in some way, they violated national security. And so, this. Uh, this is something that I think is, is probably what Trump was thinking of doing uh, when he made that inauguration speech. And, uh, and, and I think that uh, what, what Corey Good was told it was, was basically something uh, Trump was planning uh, even before uh, the inauguration, that he knows about these uh, secret technologies uh, and that have been kind of sequestered away uh, from the American public, and he's taking action to have those released. You know, I've spoken with Corey Good uh, over the past week and a half since I met him when he's when he visited the Big Island of Hawaii, and he had a lot of incredible information. And you recently told me that he was revealing all kinds of information to you in a basically an exclusive insight four hours of communication is there something that uh you learned that you think the third phase of moon viewers should hear right now oh well, yeah there's actually um quite a bit of information uh one one involves uh the air force uh the the u.s air force has a secret space program um and uh this is something uh that was on the verge of being disclosed um, during the um, 2016 presidential campaign. Um, that it was raised. That this was uh, this was a possibility. Uh, and I, what's happened is that people in this Air Force program 
are now starting to have second uh, a questioning whether or not uh, they have been fooled um, in terms of there being another program that's run by the Navy that is a parallel space program so that you actually have uh, the Air Force with a program thinking uh, because of compartmentalization that they were the most advanced space program that the United States had but now they have learned that the Navy has something that is even more uh, advanced and so this is what um, Corey Good was told that the, the Air Force Secret Space Program is now conducting an investigation to basically find out whether indeed there is a Navy program. Um, and so that was uh, part of the reason why Corey uh, said that he was given a lot of information and that he was asked to give briefings to VIPs. He says he's, he's had briefings with uh, 28 VIPs so far uh, where he's talked about his experiences on this Navy-run secret space program. Um, and, and the goal is to kind of see, you know, what they know, um, to see if this is something that uh, these VIPs have had any kind of experience with or any knowledge of. So, it, you know, this is kind of one of the things that uh, Corey has revealed, uh, that, the, that the Air Force is very seriously doing this investigation. Um, he's also revealed uh, things about... Antarctica in terms of um, uh, what, what is happening down there with uh, the effort to uh, basically develop new weapon systems that Antarctica in a way has become like a, a new Area 51 uh, for elements of the, of the US military industrial complex. Yeah, quite amazing. Uh, when I met Elliot, uh, excuse me, Corey Good and I was learning about his experiences as a young child being inducted into the my lab experiment program in regards to his intuitive impact uh, capabilities. Wow. It really brought a lot of thoughts came to mind. And first off, I, I have to say he comes across very genuine. So I have to ask you being, being with him, spending some time with him. Do you believe his story? Because it, it's quite fantastic. It, it is a fantastic story. I've been working with uh, Corey for uh, two years now, and um, and, I, and I've just had my second book come out, um, where I look at the testimony of uh, both Corey and another whistleblower, uh, William Tompkins. And in the case of William Tompkins, there's a lot of documents that uh, he supplied, and that I also was able to get through the Freedom of Information Act that you know not only substantiate you know his claims of uh, of a navy secret space program um, and that uh, that the nazis had established one as well out of antarctica but that it substantiates a lot of what Corey good uh, said that uh, he served for 20 years on this navy secret space program and and so there's you know documents in this new book, uh, The Navy's a Secret Space Program and Nordic Extraterrestrial Alliance, where I spell out exactly how this Navy program uh, evolved and, and how it's separated from the Air Force program, that, that you actually had two branches of the US military um, developing their own secret space programs and each one working with different extraterrestrial groups that the Air Force uh, began working with uh, grey extraterrestrials and with, uh, and with reptilians um, in their programs where they were given assistance, uh, tall whites, another group of extraterrestrials that helped the Air Force. And on the other hand, you had the Navy working with this uh, kind of human-looking Nordic faction of extraterrestrials with a completely different agenda. So, you know, that's kind of uh, really a fascinating aspect of, of what Corey has been revealing and every, everything that I've found over the last two years uh, in doing due diligence on Corey Good's testimony has checked out. So, yes, I, I definitely uh, you know, have reached that conclusion that, that he's being very genuine with his, uh, with his information. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the first impression that I have of Corey Good as well. Uh, I think we need to get down to what and why is uh, going on down there in the Antarctica and why is the major establishment not sharing with us what they're 
refining over there because what Corey Good's got to say is uh, quite astonishing. We need to get to the bottom of this. And Corey Good and, and, uh, has agreed to come back on Third Phase of Moon. And I'd sure like to have you back, uh, Dr. Michael Sala, when that happens. So let's set something up pretty soon. Well, I'm, I'm happy to do that and, and to share more about uh, what's going on down there in Antarctica. It, it really is important, especially when it comes to this whole uh, notion of a secret Area 51 in Antarctica uh, doing weapons development and that there are companies like uh, Lockheed Martin that are uh, actively studying alien artifacts that have been recovered in Antarctica uh, for weapons development. Now, that sounds like something we need to get into. That was uh, Dr. Michael Sala. Uh, any, uh, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, best way is through my website, exopolitics.org. That's E-X-O-Politics.org. And I you know, have um, you know, over 500 articles there that people can read for nothing. And there's uh, um, links, uh, contact uh, a button there if they want to kind of like contact reason or, or kind of like uh, communicate through Facebook. Um, I'm very accessible. All right. Well, we'll share the links to Dr. Michael Sala below. And uh, we're going to get Corey Good and... Mr. Sala back right here at Third Moon because what we just heard in the last few uh, seconds there sounds like something we need to uh, find out what's really going on. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies, and if you captured anything incredible, submit it to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. My contact info is in the description. My email's there. Upload your video, copy paste that link, and send it to me right here at Third Phase of Moon. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sala. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. Wow quite incredible. We'll see you again next time.